I'm Chris Romanovsky. Uh, I work in 16 Hangar as a MRO delivery manager, uh, predominantly on the US Marine Corps contract. So Marshall is a maintenance repair overhaul facility, MRO. Customers have maintenance, they've got to keep the airworthiness of the aircraft um, current, and the only way to do that is to effectively service the aircraft. Uh, so Marshall is a facility to do that. It's not just servicing, there's modifications that the customer may want to carry out uh, and would like Marshall to embody, so we get involved in that. We've got two, two distinct inputs. We've got a PMI, planned maintenance interval, and we've got an MDI, uh, minor depot inspection. I guess the main differences between the two, a PMI is a much bigger check uh, in terms of time and what's involved. Uh, so you could expect the aircraft to be here uh, a few months, uh, typically, all being well. Um, that's a very heavy structural inspection. We take a lot, um, a lot of the structure off the aircraft. We carry out very particular inspections uh, using non-destructive methods, uh, and uh, we carry out um, a full repaint on that aircraft as well. An MDI is a much shorter, shorter uh, duration. All being well. 30 days is, is kind of where, where we aim for. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a very light check. Um, it's, it's effectively an inspection that allows the aircraft to get to its next PMI. So we're, we're, we're fixing the key issues and then we'll defer as much as we can to the rest, to the next inspection. Um, yeah, so they're, they're the two differences. A PMI, it, it does change, but typically the PMIs are carried out every six years. It is flight hour dependent as well. So if the squadrons are flying them hard, that reduces that interval. Again, similar to a car, the more miles you do, the quicker that inspection um, interval needs to be. An MDI, a um, little bit different. So every 540 days, there'll be some maintenance being carried out. If it gets to 1,080 days, that's a slightly bigger check. Uh, today, we're gonna to be looking at uh, what a PMI is effectively doing in a hangar, in a hangar layout. Um, so you'll, yeah, we'll see, a, we'll see some videos that show a breakdown of the various stages of that PMI and we'll talk through that. Firstly, the aircraft, as you can see, has already been paint stripped. Uh, it's nice shiny metal. It doesn't arrive like that, of course. We've, it's already uh, gone through a paint strip process. Um, we try and normally do that in the first 10 days of the aircraft arriving. Uh, so what we're seeing is here is, is the first few uh, moments after the paint strip coming back into the hangar. You'll see there's various um, flying controls that have already been uh, removed uh, and they're continuing to remove some of the external structure. Uh, and there's very much, they're very much underway in uh, getting ready, the air, getting the aircraft ready for an inspection. Ultimately, there's going to be things under the paint that you can't easily see. Um, and I'm talking mainly like corrosion. Um, the aircraft flying around outside all the time in the elements. Um, it's going to be susceptible to corrosion, dense um, bird strikes. Some of that, although it may be visible through the paint, doesn't really let you have a good detailed view of the structure underneath. So on a PMI, we don't do this on an MDI, on a PMI, you do the full paint strip and it allows the team to have a good evaluation, really get close, look at the detail uh, and capture all that for uh, potential repair. Normally, uh, you'll see under the wings, we've got external tanks and IFR pods. Uh, external tanks are effectively big fuel tanks, allows the aircraft to fly longer, uh, fueled up. Uh, the IFR pods are refueling pods, so uh, other aircraft uh, in that fleet uh, will be using the Hercules as a refueling base uh, when they're on mission. Those items will come off the aircraft. Uh, already mentioned flying controls as elevators, rudders, ailerons, and the flaps. They all come off the aircraft. And all being well, that would be it. Um, sometimes, depending on the age of the airframe, there may be a requirement to remove the vertical stabilizer at the back, that big chunk. Uh, and in very exceptional circumstances, we can expect to have the outer wings come off as well. So uh, we don't see too many, too many uh, occasions of that, but it, it is all possible on a, on a PMI. The reason we do the initial inspection is to actually understand what repairs need to be carried out. Uh, so we have a period of time, once all those big components have been removed, we spend uh, a good few weeks doing all the survey. We effectively have a wish list of parts in that point. So we know, right, we need to repair that part. We need to buy a new one of these. And it creates a, a, a demand back into the, 
integrated project team, or the IPT we call it, uh, and that will be involving engineering, supply chain, manufacturing, uh, and it's a big puzzle to effectively work out at what sequence we need those parts and engineering solutions to rebuild the aircraft. That then defines the, the aircraft repaint date and ultimately delivery date. So it's a very complex operation um, that's it's very important we get it right because if we don't get the sequencing correct, you could delay the, the aircraft. So at this point you'll notice that the aircraft team are starting to jack the aircraft so the aircraft is physically raised vertically. Um, that's to allow the inspection of the main landing gear and those landing gear components. Uh, and it puts the aircraft into a condition, a safe condition, that allows big structural members to be removed and reinstalled, replaced, repaired, etc. Um, you'll also notice some people walking on top of the wings. Again, that's part of the survey um, and repair repair phases. There's various fuel tanks on top of that wing that need to be accessed, inspected. Um, so there's quite there's quite a lot of work that, that goes on there. At this point, you'll notice some of those big structural components that were removed at the beginning of the input are now being reinstalled. Um, particularly you'll notice the flaps uh, being installed there as well. They've already been repainted, so you'll notice they're masked up. Um, the reason we do that is so that the markings, each customer will have their own livery. On this customer, uh, for fantails, etc., we like to have the flying controls reinstalled so that the painters can line up the, uh, the markings correctly. The ultimate aim here is to get enough of the aircraft rebuilt that allows the paint scheme to be fully completed. The actual paint shop itself uh, is the largest one uh, in Europe. It can actually accommodate a 747 um, in terms of size. That gives you an idea of, of the size of the, of the facility. Uh, and yeah, we've got um, a, a contractor which effectively does all our paint requirements. Um, various different paint schemes, there's nothing that they can't do. Uh, and yeah, the aircraft will be repainted and then returned back to the uh, facility, maintenance facility, uh, for the last part of the check. So here you can see there's a, there's a different aircraft. Um, this one's just come out of repaint. So you can see it's all nice and uh, shiny. Once we're out of paint, there's a big push to get the power on the aircraft. Uh, and you'll start to see some of the flying controls moving in and out. They're carrying out operational checks, uh, full and free movement checks. Uh, make sure all the flying controls have been rigged accordingly. There's no chafing. Uh, you'll also see um, the aircraft is kind of going up and down. Um, that's because we have to put the aircraft back on jacks um, for the uh, main landing gear, nose landing gear functions. Um, so we've got to make sure they uh, retract uh, correctly. You can see the aircraft's now in a configuration where it's going to move forward and backwards a little bit. Um, Ultimately, that's just because the aircraft's going to go on a big weighing scale. Uh, so we need to weigh the aircraft. You could appreciate uh, we've had a, we've carried out some major repairs on the aircraft since it's been here, um, as well as putting stripping the whole paint system and reapplying that paint system. That can impact the center of gravity of the aircraft. So we need to weigh it so it can be recalibrated um, and then used by the end user and make sure they're flying the aircraft safely and it's loaded correctly. You'll notice the aircraft uh, will be moving in and out the hangar a little bit now. This is near the end of the, of, the, uh, of the check. First thing we've got to do is carry out engine ground runs and pressurization runs. So the engine ground runs is effectively just making sure the engines are performing uh, within the limits um, of the manuals, uh, as well as a pressurization check. Uh, Again, loads of panels have come off the aircraft, structures have been removed. We need to make sure there's no gaps, leaks, uh, et cetera. It's got to be within the limits of the, of, the, of the manuals. So when the aircraft's flying along, there's no change in pressurization, et cetera. And then when the aircraft comes back, we do a download on the computer system and it will tell us any fault codes. The team will then rectify those faults and go running again until the fault book is clear or at a point where we're safe to release to the customer. Um, and then we're getting ready for functional check flight after that. From a certification point of view, uh, we have a C-release technician who is effectively the team leader of the, of the aircraft. They're ultimately declaring that the work that's been carried out is in accordance with um, the respective manuals. Um, the technicians on that team also have a, a, a part to play in that. They, they hold a, uh, an approval state. Uh, which is declaring that the work being carried out by the fitters is also to a standard. Uh, and that way, that's all regulated and controlled um, to ensure that the, the, the maintenance that's been carried out is in accordance with those 
correct job guides and, and safe systems of work. Uh, ultimately, making sure they're safe doing the job and the aircraft is going to be recovered to a condition where it's going to be safe to fly. The next aircraft you can see is an MDI, so a minor depot inspection. Um, you'll notice there's no paint strip on this one. It comes in painted, it goes out painted. Um, so you might see it a bit more rough and ready. Um, it, it's, it's, as I said, to get the aircraft to its next PMI. So you'll notice some slight differences, although you may see on the PMI, you'll see the engine panels opened up. There's a lot more engine work um, on an MDI than there is on a PMI. Um, so there's a lot more work in those areas. Uh, flying controls, again, we'll, we'll be looking at those uh, uh, as well. Um, but you'll notice most of the core structural elements of the aircraft remain on the aircraft. We don't take an awful lot off unless there's a finding that's telling us to do that from a critical airworthiness point of view. This is another MDI. Um, I talked at the beginning that the MDIs are here for circa 30 days. Sometimes the customer flying the aircraft may have pre-existing issues with the aircraft that is not making it full, fully mission capable, fully mission capable or FMC. Uh, so they would like Marshall to go and rectify those issues where possible. Um, yeah, at the end of every MDI or PMI, so I've seen quite a few of these now, um, we get to the functional check flight phase. So at this point, uh, we speak with a customer who speak with the squadrons who own those aircraft and they'll send an air crew out. Uh, so when the air crew arrive, we do a maintenance debrief, what work's been carried out on the PMI or MDI. That will govern what profile they do their, their flight at. Um, so there's different, there's different levels of that. Uh, so on a PMI, for instance, uh, the crew will be expected to go and use our ground running facility, ground running bay facility, carry out their engine ground runs, assuming that's all good. We'll then get to flight testing and they'll be in the air all being well four hours or so on a PMI. Uh, assuming all is good with that, that aircraft is then ready to deliver. On an MDI, uh, it's usually slightly different because we haven't broken the aircraft down to the same extent as a PMI. The functional check flight aspect is, is reduced. There's, the requirements are much, uh, much less. Uh, so typically, um, depending on the maintenance, um, there may not be a requirement to do a flight test. That could just be a straight delivery. Or if a flight test is required because we've disturbed, uh, for instance, flying controls, then there'll be roughly an hour's flight requirement, maybe two, but um, they're typically low risk. We don't normally see any issues on the back of that. So yeah, again, with the MDI, assuming they're happy with that, it's a straight delivery and that's it.